Okay, so welcome back to this next video uh, on the uh, tetracycline antibiotics. So, so far what we've seen is how um, you can add in your next uh, amino acyl tRNA into the ribosome, basically, in this A site of the ribosome. What will now happen is that the enzyme peptidyl transferase will transfer the amino acid on, uh, in this P site onto the amino acid in the A site. So this is the enzyme peptidyl transferase. Okay, right, so what it will do is it will bind the carboxyl terminus of the amino acid here onto the amino terminus of the amino acid on here. So what's going to basically happen is this enzyme is going to catalyze the formation of the peptide bond. Okay, so what you're going to get is here's the 30S ribosomal subunit, here's the piece of mRNA in the middle, okay, right, um, then we have the shine Dolgano sequence here, then we had this first start codon, and then our second codon in green. So this is our first start codon, the AUG, and then after that, straight after that, we had our uh, second codon in green. Okay. Uh, and the shine Dalgano sequence we previously coloured in orange. So this is the shine Dalgano sequence. Right, then uh, below us we have the 50S ribosomal subunit, and uh, this here is the P site here. So this is the P site, like so, where um, an amino acyl tRNA was bound, but now it's lost its amino acid group, so it's just a tRNA now. And that was the P site, sorry, not the A site. And next door to it, we have this A site where an amino acyl tRNA is bound, but now it's not just an amino acyl tRNA, it's got this amino acid from the first tRNA, basically. It's got this methionine, uh, well, this formal methionine, basically. So if I colour in this amino acid here yellow, then basically that one has now been added on to the amino acid here. Okay, and the enzyme which catalyzes that transfer is this peptidyl transferase enzyme down here. Okay, now in the case of this first transformation, this first uh, transfer, transfer of the amino acid from this one to this one, there was only one amino acid attached um, to uh, this uh, tRNA which was in this position. But as the peptide grows, what we're going to now see is uh, we're going to shift the ribosome over a bit. So um, this amino acyl tRNA with these two amino acids now, this dipeptide attached to it, it's going to be moved into the P site basically. And then what's going to happen is this process is going to go around again. So another, once this one has gone into the P site and this one's gone into the E site and then vacates basically, this one will now be in the P site, and another amino acyl tRNA will come into the A site. Peptidyl transferase will transfer not just one amino acid this time, but it will transfer the whole dipeptide. Or if we're continuing this process on and on, it will be a polypeptide. So, let's see this process of ribosomal movement. So what now happens is that uh, the uh, elongation factor G is important next. So another elongation factor by the name of elongation factor G comes along. So this is elongation factor G. And basically elongation factor G is bound to GTP. Okay? And it comes along to the ribosome and the GTP on elongation factor G is hydrolyzed to GDP and inorganic phosphate and basically the energy that this hydrolysis of GTP releases is then used to move the whole ribosome a little. It moves it up the mRNA basically. So let me show you what's going to happen. So if this is the um, 30S subunit here, then uh, the whole ribosomal subunit is going to move like that basically. So uh, the mRNA is going to move like this. In fact, I shouldn't draw it like that. I need it sticking out like this. We'll turn that into the shine Dolgano sequence there, so no harm done. Okay, there's the mRNA going off down there. Now, what's going to happen, basically, 
is that this start codon is going to go into uh, the E site here. So let's say this is the E site. The next codon will go into the P site, and the third codon will come along now, and that will be in the A site. So let me show this. Here is our um, tRNA, which is bound to the start codon in pink. So here's the start codon now, and it's now in what's known as the E site. So let me show this with this blue pen. So this site here that this tRNA is in is the um, E site for the exit site, okay? Um, and these other two uh, codons here are now in the A and the P site. So this one is in the A site, and this one is in the P site. Okay, right. So our second codon of our mRNA has now moved from being in the A site previously to being in the P site. And some new codon has come along, which is now in this, and I'm trying to find a colour, which I can colour it in, I'll colour it in yellow, which is now in this A site, basically. Okay, so, uh, the um, uh, tRNA that's now got this dipeptide on is here, basically, now in the P site, so it's moved forward, and the A site is now vacant, okay, and the peptidyl transferase enzyme is still here. And this portion up here is the shine Dalgano sequence. Right. So basically, the um, ribosome moves along the mRNA. Okay. And now what will happen is this tRNA here, which is in, excuse me, which is in the E site of the uh, ribosome, that will leave, basically. So this is going to come out, it's going to exit, and the process will happen again. So basically, another amino acyl tRNA with this elongation factor TU and GTP bound to it will come into the A site, and it will be a tRNA which is complementary to that third codon. What will then happen is the peptidyl transferase enzyme will uh, move this dipeptide here onto that third amino acid, and you'll now have a tripeptide off of this tRNA. Then the movement process will happen again, so the ribosome will shift along one, this tRNA will go into the E site, this tRNA with the tripeptide on will go into the P site, etc., and the process continues on basically. Now, I just need to discuss how you regenerate this uh, elongation factor G. So, um, we've take, every time you move the ribosome, the elongation factor G uh, goes from having GTP bound to it to having GDP bound to it. And the energy released by that hydrolysis, it moves the ribosome along the mRNA. So, basically, in order to regenerate this, you just knock off that GDP molecule. So it dissociates from the GDP just to make a pure elongation factor G molecule and then uh, you um, just put another GTP back on there and you have reassembled the elongation factor G with a GTP or a guanosine triphosphate molecule on it. Okay, so that's the mechanism by which uh, you get translation of uh, the mRNA it by a bacterial ribosome. And as you can see, we're gradually going to build up this polypeptide until you finally get to a codon in this mRNA, which is the stop codon, and that will basically sit in this A site, and it will have absolutely no um, tRNA, which has a complementary anti-codon to it. So you'll just halt, basically. You'll sit there waiting, and then finally what will happen is that water will come in uh, and hydrolyze this, um, this uh, polypeptide off from the, um, the, the tRNA, which is now in the P site, and the whole polypeptide will go off, basically, and you'll have this sequence of amino acids all joined together. Okay, so that's the process of uh, bacterial translation. So now let's look at how tetracyclines work. So um, we'll continue this in the next video.